to remind ourselves what are we looking at now? Health ministries. The interesting part is those of you who have remembered to wear your badges around your necks, you actually are wearing this thing. Why didn't you ask them, what is this that you are making us wear around our necks? Because <laughs> last night I was explaining it, but I'm told you've been wearing your badges for the whole week. If you look at your, your badges for the whole week, that's what you are, you are wearing. Okay, we say that it is the Adventist Health Ministries, the right hand of the gospel. Or Adventist Health Ministries, the right hand of the three angels' message. Now that you are wearing that thing, we are going to... Uh, technology again. This is why I just go for the good old finger. <laughs> okay, these problems are too many. Fine. Okay, because today the presentation I'm making, it does have some logos and things from other companies. I, I do make that disclaimer that I don't get anything from them, and I'm not being paid by anybody to market anything of theirs. Uh, and even if I were to share my presentations with you, please, as it stays there, this is specifically meant for education. And should you choose to share the presentation, I request that you keep the slides together. Because we sometimes struggle that when you have shared your presentation, somebody likes this particular slide alone. It's got your logo and your brand in it, and they send only that one out of context. Mm -hmm. And then the message that you are making is totally different. You, you, you do know this story, right? Mm -hmm. About the man who, wanted, who was very, very unhappy with life. And then they say that he thought, what am I going to do? What am I? So he said, the Bible has answers. So he opened, and then he opened to the story of Jesus and the disciples. And then uh, when, uh, what's his name? Judas just went to hang himself. The Bible says, and he went and hung himself. It's like, eh, he hung himself. Okay, closed the Bible. I said, I'm going to look for another one. Opened. Then the verse where Jesus was sending the people two by two, and, he, and then the ghost that read us, no. He went again. He finds the one where Jesus was talking to the disciples about the Lord's Supper. Go and do likewise. You get that? What do you think happened to him? <laughs> That's what you get when you take the message out of context. Yeah? <laughs> so please, do not try to read these verses, I mean these slides, one at a time and you take it here and take it there. If you are going to share our presentation, share it complete. Or don't share it at all. Are we together? Yes. Thank you very much. The topic for today, branding. That's why I said I had to make that disclaimer. It would be very nice if you can get this thing to work. It's on. Ah, it does work. Okay, I was going the wrong direction. Thank you. <coughs> branding Adventist Health Facilities. We are going to talk a little bit about this. This is Sabbath school, so at one point we'll get to discuss uh, because of the interest of time, I won't take questions in the middle. But at the end, I hope we'll have a little bit of time that we can ask one or two questions. I'm not sure how I'm doing for time for that. Que first question. How many Adventists has facilities do you think there are in the world? Who can take a guess? Sabbath school members. Somebody was teasing me in the car here saying I'm the superintendent. <laughs> you remember the person. You remember yourself. So I'll be the superintendent indeed. How many Adventist health facilities are there worldwide? Any ideas? Just take a guess. 50? You can't even guess. There are at least 100 plus hospitals. They are actually close to about 178 or so. But uh, because this is uh, something that somebody's going to carry with them, I'm putting it at a safe number and saying 100 plus. And 25 of these are in Africa. So we have many health facilities. And these are specific hospitals, okay? They are not just clinics. I'm not counting clinics. I'm counting hospitals with admissions, you know, the big size things. And 13, in SID alone, we have 13 hospitals. And um, I'm going to share some of you, I mean, some of the pictures, say me, maybe some of them you may know. You've heard of that? Malamulo Hospital in Malawi is the oldest one we have that is existing. 
Did you know that Malamulu Hospital is older than Lom, um, Loma Linda University Hospital? Because we don't invest so much and put so much energy in our facilities, we will always be looking at other people's things. Of course, they are Adventists, but they are in other continents, right? Malamulo was started before Loma Linda was started. That's how old some of our facilities are. By the way, in case you don't know, the Advent Health message came into Africa through health ministries. The first people that came in here were the medical missionaries that anchored somewhere in the Cape Town there, and they did start a small sanitarium there. Unfortunately, it is no longer there. But uh, that is how we ended up with the Adventist uh, message in Africa. And it is true for all other facilities. <coughs> um, the other one is that, couldn't take a better picture, they sent me that one, Mwami, in Zambia. Ever seen it or heard of it? It's in Zambia, somewhere there. When you go to Mwami, you actually are very close to the Tanzanian side. I didn't realize that you can be that close. But it is somewhere up those sides. Um, and then it's also close to the border with Malamulo. The missionaries that were in Malamulo, they were working the whole territory. Then they went over into what later became known as Zambia. But that was the territory that they were working in on that side. We've got this one. They are not in any particular order of age. I just picked them as the pictures that I actually had. Then you've got Kanye Adventist Hospital. It's, uh, this one is in, in Botswana. And it is another old one. We celebrated uh, 93 years, two years ago. They are very old. It is the first institution health facility in Botswana. Many of our nurses, if not most, of our senior nurses were in the country, were trained there because that's where the training actually started. That's the kind of contribution that you have made. This is your mission story for this. We are having everything rolled up in one, yeah? <laughs> the superintendent, the mission story, all of it rolled up in one. And then I put this one here, Maluti Adventist Hospital. Do you know where it is? Lesotho. I should have had prices here to give people. Then it will juggle your memories much more. Okay, Maluti Adventist Hospital is in Lesotho. You know this one? Vista Clinic. It's the only psychiatric facility that we have in this continent. It's in South Africa. Some of you may not even know that it's Adventist. But it is right in the heart of Pretoria. Google search it. It's a beautiful place. Really, really wonderful. You are, we don't force people there. You go there voluntarily. Maybe I should stick this there. Yeah? You go there voluntarily if you want for, your, for admission, but it's a psychiatric facility. Uh, it has won a lot of accolades. It's actually, last year, you said to be the best psychiatric hospital in Africa. Amen. Best private psychiatric hospital, and that's ours there. And then, you wouldn't know this. Clinic Medical Adventiste. You could at least guess. Oh, you got the language wrong. That's French. <laughs> it's French. If you thought this was Portuguese, you would have been right. <laughs> yes. This is in Madagascar. It's in Antananarivo. And these are just samples. But otherwise, these are some of the facilities that you have. You've got Yuka in Zambia, close to the Congo area. You've got Lusaka Eye Hospital. It's a very private eye hospital. Uh, the, also the only one that we have that's focused on eyes only. You've got the Longo Health Center that we are just upgrading to a hospital. We have just finished uh, building the clinic, I mean, the, um, the theater there. So it will be upgraded to a hospital. It's right there in the Longwe. We've got Andapa Hospital. It's up in Madagascar, up in the mountains. There is a beautiful facility, but also one of the truly mission facilities that we have. Then we've got Blantyre in Malawi, which is one of the top class for many years. Banda would not go anywhere. I mean the former president, Banda. He will only go to Malawi. And that was, even now, it's still the only facility in the country that has got a cardiologist. It's got specialists there. It's got a very nice ICU, neonatal ICU. And then again in Madagascar, you've got Ankazambo and you've got Mahabo. They are all in Madagascar. Over and above hospitals. Did you know that we run also six hospices and nursing homes? 
And I said those were just hospitals. In, in terms of clinics, we've got 81 clinics, health centers, mobile sites, mobile sites in, the whole, in the region. So that puts the asset around 114 health facilities in the SID alone. And these are the nursing homes that we have. Madagascar has only one, and South Africa has got six nursing homes and home of the age. So I kind of put a summary of the facilities that we have that you can see there in Angola. We have got 10. Botswana, we've got three discount hospitals and clinics. Uh, Lesotho, we've got 12. Um, Madagascar, 6. Malawi, 21. We've got a good network of clinics around there. Other than the three hospitals, then they've got clinics there. Mozambique, we've got two. Namibia, we have only one clinic that we are very, very proud of because it's a church that decided we cannot go on without a clinic. So they put money together and they built the clinic and they hired the doctor and they put the doctor there. It's right there next to uh, the conference and it's a beautiful facility. Uh, South Africa, you have only that psychiatric one. Zambia, we have 12 and Zimbabwe, we have 12. They are all clinics. That is what a footprint that we have. Do you realize that you don't know about these facilities? Yeah. That speaks volumes about ourselves. And so many of us have heard about the Loma Lindas of this world and the other facilities of this world. Ask yourself why. You are health professionals. You are here. And I would like you to ask yourself why. Why is it that we've got such a big footprint and I know nothing about it? That's part of the presentation now. Other than the hospitals and clinics I've just said, when it comes to health facilities, we've also got this. We have health training facilities. In Lesotho, we've got Maluti, where we do midwifery and nesting. Kanye, we've got uh, the Kanye Hospital in Botswana, where we do midwifery, nesting, and family nurse practice. In Malamulo, we have got, uh, actually, we've got a university there. Adventist University, Malawino Adventist University, the College of Nursing falls under that. We do nursing, midwifery, lab technician, clinical officers. And at the hospital, guess what? We train surgeons. It's a specialist facility. It is COSEXA accredited. The, the surgeons that are trained there actually are accredited. They can even work in South Africa. They can work anywhere. It is, uh, we have got it in partnership with what you call PACS. This is Pan-African um, Academy of Christian Surgeons. That's what PACS stands for. In partnership with other Christian institutions, we've got these facilities. The other one is in uh, Ethiopia. I think the other one is in Cameroon. And we work together and they rotate and we have surgeons there. Every year we have been taking two surgeons. Uh, that can go in. And I always encourage people towards the end of the year, uh, you can check, write that um, Malamulo and, or Pax and try to find the website. Those of you who are trying to specialize, we have actually been sponsoring somebody there as the division to do, to do surgery. What is beautiful about this is their report. You know how we send our children abroad to go and specialize and they never come back? This one here gives you any support. It's under Loma Linda. Is supported by Loma Linda. So a number of the modules that are actually done with Loma Linda. Um, and we do give them some exchange programs where they go to the States and they come back in here. What we are excited about is in all the PACS institutions, more than 90% of the surgeons trained, they stay in Africa. They stay in their facilities where they, the way, where they have been trained or in other Christian institutions. Then in Rusangu, we train environmental health nursing, and we have been struggling to start the MBA in healthcare administration. So many of us want to be in facilities, but we don't train administrators. We put together a program together with uh, AUA, and it was agreed that AUA would be bringing their lecturers to Zambia nearby here. That program should have started this um, last year, August, actually. We couldn't start off, and we needed just 10 students to start off. We didn't start because Adventists did not enroll. We had not opened it up to other people. You did not enroll. We didn't register. We sent it to the leaders, to the conferences, to the unions. Uh, we, said, we spoke to them, and we sent them also the curriculum. You will learn about human resources. You will learn about running facilities, the things that we really need. Because one of the reasons why you don't know about our facilities is that we haven't learned how to run facilities properly. 
And this course was to teach you that it gives you a little bit of finance and the like. And like I said, it was an AUMBA. Instead of you going to Kenya, we had arranged for them to come over here. But we didn't get enough students. If I don't get enough students by the end of the year, they're going to scrape off the program. They had even given me two scholarships for women to say if I can get women who can come in there. Well, it was not 100% scholarship, but it will take you about 50%. As the division, we have put up a 50% scholarship for about three or four people. I only got applications from one country. There were about six or seven. I said, I can't give six or seven scholarships to one country. That would not be right. I need others. But why shouldn't I when they actually applied? You understand? So we would like to encourage you that when we send flyers on WhatsApps, on medias, in the church, and church letters, all the places, please come forward Adventists. Our problem is in most of these facilities, especially in health, generally the average number of Adventists working, there will be 30% of the staff. The other 70% is everybody else. Our people, we have our own issues going there. At the PACS program, all the people who are there are non-Adventists who have enrolled. Remember I said it's Pan-African Christian. There are other Christian, other denominations who have come in because we have to be a Christian to enroll there, but they are not Adventists. I have been there. In fact, we had offered a scholarship twice. I offered a scholarship. This year I gave it to somebody else who is doing medicine. But we were offering scholarship for specialization because that's what we needed. For three years, I stayed with that scholarship and the division said, I'm taking the money. People would apply for one reason or another. When I'm just about to put their names, they'll pull out because they found something better. That's the world we live in. Anyway, in Zushe, Madagascar, we train nursing and midwifery. And in Solusi, as you know, we've been having environmental health there. And uh, there's a small facility in Angola where they do auxiliary nesting. That country still allows for that. Of course, then we have got uh, wellness and lifestyle-oriented facilities like your Be Free. Uh, you know, those are also facilities that are under the banner of the church. And then I know there are other people here who are thinking of other facilities also. But the point is, as Adventists, we have already gone a long way. This is just the SID. This is the footprint that you have in the SID. And over and above that, we have facilities that are run by Adventists using Adventist principles. They are not necessarily facilities of the church, but they are the reaching out that we are doing through our facilities. Now, think about it. What if these facilities were all branded properly? Huh? What if these wellness centers, health training centers, your hospitals and your clinics actually carried this brand that you are talking about, Adventist Health Ministries? Wouldn't they be more visible? I think they would be because there would be synergy. Our challenge is we have locked ourselves for too long into silos. Each person is doing their own little thing. The facilities that are in... in uh, no, that cannot be correct. <laughs> the facilities that are in, uh, in, Zan in Zimbabwe are just working on their own. The other ones, everybody's working on their own. She thinks I have 10 minutes left. <laughs> and I'm just starting. Okay, I'm going to have to rush through this one here. So, I'm going to have to rush through this so that we are together. What actually is branding? Somebody gives you a drink in a bottle, and it's brown, and the bottle is labeled Coca-Cola, and you taste it, and it's sour, what do you say? It's not a Coke. But it is written Coca-Cola, it's marketed as Coca-Cola, it's even bottled like Coca-Cola, but you, the person drinking it, you say that it's not Coca-Cola. Therefore, branding is the way that your customers perceive you. Coca-Cola cannot go and change its drink that you have. I know people who drive Mercedes-Benz. You give them a car and it breaks down and you find that, ah, that's not a Benz. A Benz does not do that. Right? That's what we tell ourselves. Or you, the kids, when they go around, they see a big M on the street. They tell you to turn. They expect something in there. If they go there and they find uh, porridge and doby, do you think they'll tell, ah, but me, there's something wrong with this M. It's not the same as the M that we know. 
Who thought, who ever thought that an apple that's half eaten would get known so well, right? Right? I mean, it's just an apple that is not even full apple. But now when you see a half eaten apple, you expect something out of it. You expect quality. It has been built into your head. You go there and buy some shoes from our other friends from across the seas. And then you go from, it's got a tick on it. And you go, you run one race, it comes back, it's open. You are saying, that's not it. That's not it. Would you go to this brand when you are trying to buy a wedding dress? A nice wedding dress for, huh? You have priced it already to say, this is where I go when I have so much money. That's, the, that's what has been built in your head on that one. The same thing you can do with institutions. So what then is branding? Branding is actually the process that creates a unique name and image for products. It aims to establish the thing that you are talking about. You know, there's that little something that says, no, it's not a Nike. No, it's not a Benz. What is that thing? It makes a significant difference, and that's what creates loyalty. You end up going to this shop that I was just showing on the screen, when your money is less. You don't go to another one with an, like an M upside down. You know that one. You don't go there when you don't have enough money in your pockets because something has been built in you. Why am I going this wrong way? So this is how a brand is communicated. Remember, I'm coming back to ourselves. The brand is communicated in many ways. Among other things, is the service that you place in the environment. You want that Mercedes-Benz because you don't expect to be servicing all the time. You don't expect to have a breakdown on the road. That's what they've built in your head. How your, your customers and staff members are treated. Some of us, you go to this particular shop all the time because of how they treat you. You expect that they'll package. Even something as simple as when you have paid somebody's there to pack your things makes a difference when whether you go to this shop or that shop. Or how the, pri the prices are being done, like we've just talked about that other shop. The public relations, the, ver the various things that you find in that. So it's important to remember something very important. Branding and marketing are two distinctive things. In our church, most of the time, we market. We go around and we tell the people about this big tent meeting that is coming. We go house to house, and we, but we have not deliberately gone out to create a brand. And this is the difference that I would like us to come out with here, that as you are forming your chapters and the like, you need to ask yourself, am I calling people, am I just marketing or am I branding? Many of us don't have, some may never have seen even the marketing campaigns of Nike or some of those other shoe things. But somebody who has won it and say, ah, just do it. Right? It's not the marketing. It's the brand that has been cooked in your head. So your brand is what the, leaves the lasting impact and influence the crucial decision of whether or not someone will become a long-term customer. Marketing is what brings them to your doors. Branding is what makes them stay and stay loyal customers. So now to rush through this whole thing there. <clears throat> the most important thing with branding is what? Consistency. When I asked you about our institutions, when you go from one health facility to another, you may not notice anything about it. This one here agrees, the other one doesn't greet. This one prays with you, the other one doesn't care to pray. There is no consistency, therefore you cannot feel. There is no Adventist feel in it. You can't go in and say, I've been to an Adventist facility. So, even when you pick the logo, like right now I'm teaching you our logo, it needs to stand for something. If you are going to find somebody with this t-shirt and they're drinking beer, and you don't feel anything wrong with it, something is wrong with the brand. Yeah. You, you understand? You must feel there's something wrong with this. Somebody cannot be wearing, I'd rather have Jesus and he's wearing the beer, the beer on the bottle. It doesn't work like that. There's not a brand on that. Mister, what am I going to do? So, it's not just products. You can brand systems too. And that is where we come in. Many of us, when we go to South Africa and you are sick, you would want to go to a net care facility or a medical clinic facility. Why do you go there? 
Why aren't you just going to any hospital around? There is something you expect to actually come out alive. If I had my own little facility there, you probably wouldn't turn up there because you don't know if those doctors even have certificates. You know, you, you, a brand in an institution says a lot of things. It would say the services that I won't catch something I didn't come with when you are there. If you are coming to a Marriott hotel and you are, you are traveling alone, the first thing you meet is a cockroach. You will never come back. You understand? Because it destroys the brand. There is a, a sense of safety. We go to a particular type of hotels. When you are in a strange land, you don't know anything or anybody. You go for the brand. Because you are at least feeling safe. Once upon a time, if you had... Um, this is Adventist brand. I know. Uh, these are some of the brands that we have. Do we even work to do them? At least Adra is doing very well as a brand. When people see the Adra car coming, there is hope. Somebody's going to help. But these are some of our brands that we are having as a church. Do we even know what to expect out of them? This is an Adventist institution. If you come in and you find an institution with that triple, uh, this, you know, you see this one here. That's our Adventist education. Will you send your child there because it's got the stamp? Do you know the standard of the teachers that you find there? So it's not just about marketing. It's not just about labeling. It's about building a brand. So I don't have any more minutes. Uh, now I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I'm just getting warm here. But what if we branded all our facility. When they give us time, we will need to discuss these things, these questions here. What then is an Adventist health facility? I started off by giving a whole list of facilities that are in my list. Are they Adventist? Is being an Adventist facility means that you are owned by the church? Is that what makes it an Adventist facility? Must the CEO be a church employee? What if it is owned by the church? What if all the employees there are church, church workers except the CEO? Is he still Adventist? He is the face of the institution. He is the one who goes talking about it. He is the one who makes the decision. Does it make it Adventist? What if it's the other way around? The church owns it. The CEO is Adventist, but everybody else is not Adventist. Is that an Adventist facility? I don't know. This is the discussion we are supposed to be having if we had time. What if it is uh, <clears throat> the medical, yes? Oh, you are so kind. God bless the pastor. He just gave us a bit more time. <laughs> what if uh, most of the staff, Advents, what if they serve everything except vegetarian meals? We get a lot of issues. People come here and say, that is not an Adventist facility. They say, why? They gave me meat when I was there. Did they treat you nicely? Yes, they did. Did they pray with you? Yes, they did. But it's not Adventist. What makes an Adventist facility? If we were in a proper Sabbath school, I would say in the afternoon we come and discuss this. <laughs> but now I'm told this is not a proper Sabbath school because the whole afternoon is already packed on its own. Anyway, let me wind up by saying, you keep those questions in mind. Uh, when we get an opportunity, we need to discuss that. Because I believe coming with that conclusion is going to help you make the big decision that you are struggling with as, Zim as Zimbabwe. I know you have been thinking and talking a lot about building your hospital. I need you to have that in mind. If you are going to build that hospital and the only Adventist is going to be the leader of the hospital and all of you nurses and doctors here are going to find that the payment is not up to standard, the, the, this and that is not what you want, and you are not working there, will it still be Adventist? I don't know. I leave that with you. If you go there and work there, but you don't have anybody qualified enough and willing to come and run the facility, will you go and work there under somebody who is an Adventist? Does it still make it Adventist hospital? In your mind, when you say you should have an Adventist hospital, what is it that you have in mind? I would like to hope that um, we should have a strategic intent because we need to know why we build Adventist facilities. That's where it starts. Branding is about thinking. You think about what is it that I want people to imagine. It's not by chance that those of you who are hooked to coke are hooked to coke. Somebody 
specifically sat there and thought about it. What should I do that people will recognize? What is it that will get into somebody's mind that when they pass by, they cannot pass me by? You need to understand. You can't just decide you are going to build a hospital because there are no hospitals in Zimbabwe. It's not a good enough reason for that. You can't say, I'm going to want to build a hospital because we want where our members will be going. Is that the, the purpose of our facilities? Somebody would say they're built for evangelism. Do we evangelize just to ourselves? So if we don't evangelize to ourselves, should we be building facilities so that we go there? One would say, if the strategic intent is for us to evangelize with facilities, therefore we should build facilities that they who have not heard the message would come. What will they find when they come? That's where the strategic intent comes from. Because if they come in there and they have a good panado and a good doctor and have, have a nice day and that's all they get, you have missed your mission. You've just added the number of facilities that the, the government of Zimbabwe is doing. There must be something. What is that something? That is the brand. That is what you have to have. So, the church policy says, and that is our working policy, uh, FH20, you can see those statements. Number two, it says, healthcare institutions should function as an integral part of the total ministry of the church. Amen. So, the first thing that is going to build your brand is that your facility is part of the church. You cannot go there and build a hospital because health professionals in Zimbabwe want somewhere they can go and work. That is not the mission of the church. Of course you can build that, but you cannot call it an Adventist facility if it's got nothing to do with the mission of the church. Are we together? However you brand it, whatever you choose to do, if it's an Adventist church, it must be part of the mission of the church. Primary prevention and health education shall also be an integral part of the health emphasis of Seventh-day Adventist health care institutions. Therefore, our institutions cannot just go there and decide, I'm going to build a surgery. It's just a surgery, and it does not even teach the people to avoid coming back. Somebody will say, ah, if you teach them to avoid coming back, then we'll run out of business. The spirit of prophecy says no. Branding make sure they come back, even if just to greet you. Most of our facilities are, that are still standing are standing on donations. Donations of grateful people who came once, and they are grateful because they came, they never had to come back. So they will donate so that more people can get true healing. It is not about keeping the people coming back when they are sick that keeps the facility open. Soon enough, they'll go somewhere else because you haven't cured them. Shouldn't they find someone who will actually deal with the problem? If I keep coming back to you with the same problem, I don't think I should be coming to you. I should find somebody else who will help me deal with this problem. So if we find a way to definitively deal with problems, we will retain loyal customers. So we must go the spirit of prophecy route. It tells us that our facilities must have education on health. Remember we talked about health facilities and sickness facilities yesterday? We should not be sickness facilities. We expect as a church that the administration and operation of Seventh-day Adventist healthcare institution shall include consultation with the health ministries, that's our department, on a regular and continuous basis. Consultation shall include the mission or the conference, the union, division, or general conference, whatever it is that is necessary there. In other words, Zimbabwe is great that you want to build your hospitals and other things. You can't build them by ignoring the union, by ignoring the conference. It will not work. It will work for you, of course. You will have a facility, you'll be there, but you will not have an Adventist facility. There are a lot of things that another place, another time we can talk about that are embedded in that statement. Expectations, you know, more than anything, the brand. What happens when during the construction of that facility, the person up there falls down and dies on the spot? Builders have a tendency of doing that. It just goes with the territory or breaks something. Who covers them? Adventist risk management. You know ARM stands for Adventist risk management. Sometimes we say these acronyms until we forget who it is. 
IFS this risk management is the insurance of the church. Yes. If you are building on your own and you have decided to ignore the church, who has covered those people who are there? Who is actually behind that institution? Ask yourselves that. Um, last, We emphasize on the prevention because the spirit of prophecy says so. Medical ministry page 221 says, the distinction between prevention and cure has not been made sufficiently important. Teach the people that it is better to know how to keep well than how to cure disease. We expect that of our facilities. Our physicians should be wise educators, warning all against self-indulgence, showing that abstinence from the things that God has prohibited is the only way to prevent ruin of body and mind. God's children out there are struggling from addictions to these things that are hurting them. They wish they could be released. But if you are going to sit there and give them this pill and that pill, this herb and that herb, this shake and that shake for them to get relief from symptoms, you are not doing what the Adventist ministry is about. The Adventist health ministry is about teaching them to take control. Teaching them to be in touch with the one who can control and then freeing them from that bondage, they will always thank you. And they will show their gratitude in bigger ways than the little bit of amount of money you are asking for in consultation. You won't lose them. So our brand would then look something like this. Remember we talked about this last night, John 10 verse 10? Our brand will give abundant life. When somebody has been to an Adventist institution, even if they didn't say the name, they will come out and say, this must be an Adventist institution. If they haven't written anything. They prayed with me. They cared for me. They were with me the whole time. They were concerned about me. And they even made me want to come back. I know I was at an Adventist institution. Then you have built a brand. And next time, Dr. Sikwa decides to have her own little clinic here and put on it Adventist. And they come in there and I don't have all this. They say, it may call itself an Adventist institution. It isn't an Adventist institution. They didn't pray with me. They didn't care for me. They never even came to talk to me. They just came and they registered and they pushed me. They operated and they sent me home. They never cared to find out who I was, where I was coming from, what was the problem, why did I come there. They may call themselves an Adventist institution, but they are not. That is a brand. Adventist health facility brand must teach healthful living, warn against self-indulgence, follow God's guidance on prohibitions, be concerned about the body and the mind, and emphasize prevention. I can never finish talking, but they want me out of here. So have a nice day. This is where I stop. <laughs>